Hey everybody, we're just looking at the new 10.4.2 update, which was released today. Here's what's new in Logic Pro. There's a, a few things, not too much, it's nothing really significant, but there are a couple of really cool things. And I just want to showcase a couple of them right now. First, when we have our sound library, we can now relocate it and it will now move to a new location. Here's one of the things about this that's most interesting. You can relocate it if it's on one of your drives. So for instance, I could relocate this from this external drive now back to the main one if I wanted to. It shows you where the current one is. One of the things that I was hoping was is that once you did this, that you could use the same library for a bunch of your different logic setups. And it looks like you kind of can. However, it took a little bit of finagling. So here's where it is on this external drive. It's called Library Application Support. It has the GarageBand and the Logic. But I did this on one of my other computers with Logic, moved it here, and then I brought this hard drive to this computer. And there's really no easy way to be able to tell Logic that that's the place where it should go. So what I had to do is come into About This Mac, go to Storage, go to Manage Storage, come down to Music Creation, and then essentially delete some of this stuff here. So the Apple Loops aren't actually moved, but the instrument library is. So I deleted that, and then it reduced quite a bit the size of what is left. It's just, it was about 12 gigabytes. And so I just relocated that to the hard drive after giving this folder a new name. So I came in library and said library test because I was testing it out. Logic no longer knew it was there because the name was different. I relocated it to here, which didn't take very long because it wasn't that big. And then I deleted that one, changed this name back, and it popped up with almost everything in it. There's a little bit more that has to be re-downloaded just because of the distribution. But once I do that, this will now look exactly the same. And I'll be able to use this one drive for two different logic setups. Okay, so that's one thing that's pretty cool. Another thing that's actually really useful, and this is more in the tracking process, is the ability here to send on faders. So what this means is if we have a send... The send level here, if we click this, this becomes the send level. And then we turn it off, it goes back to the fader that's for the volume fader. Turning it on and off, we can do all of that for any of the different ones. You can see here that if we have multiples, let's just do another one here. And let's do another one that's on bus nine, turn this on as bus one, it goes yellow. Any of them that are bus nine now will show up. We can adjust the faders. This is great for doing headphone mixes. And also I haven't tested this out. In fact, let me do this real quick because it's something I want to test out with the actual logic app on my iPad. Let's come in here to the mixer for a moment. Yeah, so now I can do really quickly using the, the control app, the remote app, I can adjust the sends using the faders and then turn that back off and it goes back to the normal volume faders. The other thing with this is that if we set independent pan, so this, this allows us to pan on the sends. When we turn this on, the pans here actually control the panning now for those sends. We, I actually haven't figured out yet where to set that up in terms of which one it's going to be working on. I'm assuming, well, I don't know. It's going to be a question. I need to figure that out. How do we know which of these pan knobs? I can see which one it's doing, but, oh yeah, so I switch it to there and it does it for both of them. Okay, so it's a little tricky there, but I think it's gonna work okay. This is great for efficiency in that world. However, one of the things that is the most cool, 
and also again, once again, the most flawed in some ways, is the new ability to drag and drop things out here onto Alchemy. So let's set up Initialize Preset, and I'm gonna come just pull some random audio file here. Let's go just find anything random from our logic. Let's see if we have bounces. Okay, so here are some bounces. I can pull this bounce and you'll see I can layer the or load this into any one of these four banks and I can choose which type of analysis to do for this. So I can do spectral, granular, additive, or sampler. Spectral. And then it'll import it in. We can continue to edit it on from there. Except sometimes, as you just saw, it did not like that. And this is the one thing that's a little quirky because, here, let's do something a little shorter here. So it's loading now, and we'll see if it's coming in all the way. Yeah, so there it is. Now we could come into D, and we could continue to edit this in those modes that we have. Okay, so close out of there. Here's the thing that I was really upset about with this. Say that we have something here in our project bin, and this is an audio file. Let's come back out to our global where we do this. It looks different. You see how not all four of them light up and it's no longer completely, it's not, it's totally solid. You can't see through it anymore. If I drop it into opaque, it doesn't happen. So while the mechanism is here, it's recognizing that I'm dragging from there. I have not yet been able to actually pull from our project media bin onto Alchemy. That for me is a huge waste because if I have to come out to the finder, I can come out here and say, well, I can't do it this one. Let's do it right there. Show files in finder. And it will pull it up, but then I have to pull it from the finder there. I don't understand why I can't just come here from our project area instead. And so that's part of an issue for me is that it's just not as good and tightly integrated once again as it could be. Once this is done, say that I'm editing a file in my actual main window here on a track, I'd love to be able to pull that straight into there because... That for me is the best one-to-one -one getting files into Alchemy as easy as possible. There are a few other things here. For instance, we can come down and add photos into our notes. So we have notes, we have the ability to put notes with pictures down here. I haven't actually tested that out. Let's just try it real quick. So I've got this photo. It's not letting me just drag it on there. I guess we'll have to research how to put those on. But some interesting other things that come along with this, with the, the pictures and keeping things organized and session data and things like that. So there were a few other small things with this. Let's see what's new. So Smart Tempo, I'm excited to try some of those out because what we have with this is the ability to bring in full stems, multi-track files that can then define the tempo. I have a bunch of drum tracking sessions that I'd like to pull in and have the tempo assigned for those. That's exciting. Uh, some small things like numerical editing in Alchemy. Yeah, that's nice that it's there, but it's not something I was worried about. Uh, dragging one automation point over another now aligns them vertically. We looked at the mixer mode. Automatic slurs in the score editor. So it says add a photo to track or project notes to help remember key session. Have to look at how to do that still. And then just a bunch of other performance and stability. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Some cool stuff. And I hope this was helpful just showing a little bit about what's new. And hope you're having a great week.